But I'm here now to debunk uh, Christianity in less than a minute. And to do so, I'll need the first witness, Jesus of Nazareth. Okay, so Jesus teaches in the Gospel of John that the only true God is the Father. Who's that? The only true God is the Father. For those at the back, the only true God is the Father. If the only true God is the Father, then Jesus cannot be God. If Jesus is God, then means he's lying. If he's lying, it means he isn't God. Therefore, if Jesus says the Father is the only true God, he isn't God. If he's lying about the Father being the only true God, he isn't God. Therefore, Jesus debunks Christianity in less than a minute. Christians, you're welcome. All right. Okay, so uh, let's think about this. So when a Muslim raises the argument that Jesus statement in John 17, three, that they may know you, that's what Jesus says, the only true God and Jesus Christ whom you've sent proves Jesus is not God. They are assuming a Unitarian position. Okay. As opposed to Trinitarian position. Okay. Now this is precisely where I think his, um, his error uh, lies. Okay. The Muslims, they impose an external theological presupposition onto the text rather than allowing the doctrine of the Trinity, for example, as derived from the whole of scripture to inform their interpretation. Of course, obviously they don't believe the Trinity, so they're not going to do this. But when you, um, reflect upon the idea of how the doctrine of the Trinity is derived, it's not derived by simply providing proof text. It is, is derived by considering what all of scripture has to say about uh, the nature of God. Okay. Now, the fundamental flaw in this argument here is the assumption that the Father is the only true God. That statement by Jesus excludes Jesus from divinity. This again is a Unitarian presupposition, which holds that God is unipersonal. Uh, for instance, uh, only uh, God is only one person, or one person can only one person can be God. Okay, that's the assumption being kind of snuck in here. But the Bible teaches that God is triune, one being, three persons. The distinction between the Father and Jesus as persons doesn't negate their shared essence as the one true God. Remember, Trinitarian theology and a, tri a Trinitarian conception of God is monotheistic. Christians do not believe in three gods. We believe in one God. One God, one in being, three in persons. Now, it's crucial to recognize that Trinitarian theology affirms that the Father is the only true God. No Trinitarian is going to reject that, right? But this does not mean that he's the only person who is God. Scripture equally affirms that the Son and the Holy Spirit are also the one true God, distinct in personhood, but united in divine essence. And therefore, when Jesus says the Father is the only true God, he's not excluding himself from divinity, but simply affirming the monotheistic truth that the Godhead, of which he is a part, is the only true God. Now, the Gospel of John itself refutes the claim that Jesus is not God. I mean, John 1.1 1, 1 comes to mind. In the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Jesus, identified as the Word in verse 14, is explicitly called God. That's why John 1, 1 and John 1, 14, in the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, and the Word was God. John 1, 14, and the Word became flesh. And again, in John 8, 58, Jesus says, before Abraham was, I am. And again, this is a direct reference to the divine name revealed to Moses in Exodus chapter 3, verse 14, where God tells Moses, I am that I am. Hence, affirming, Jesus is affirming his pre-existence and his deity. And of course, in John 20, verse 28, when Thomas encounters the risen Christ, he exclaims to Jesus, my Lord and my God. And notice that Jesus does not rebuke Thomas, but accepts the title of God. If the Muslim argument were correct, these verses would directly contradict John 17, 3, but they don't. Instead, they harmonize within the Trinitarian framework. And so Jesus' prayer in John 17, 3 is not about excluding himself from divinity, but about affirming the monotheistic faith shared by both Jews and Christians. Now, in John 17, 3, Jesus is praying to the Father as the person distinct from himself. This is consistent with the doctrine of the Trinity, where the Son, in his incarnate role, prays to the Father. Now, it's important to see that Jesus is affirming the Father as the only true God without implying a denial of his own deity. In fact, later in John 17, Jesus prays for the Father to glorify him with the glory they shared before the world existed. That's John 17, 5. Now, this demonstrates that Jesus shares the same eternal glory with the Father, something that only God could do, as per Isaiah 42, 8. Now, 
The claim that John 17, 3 denies Jesus' divinity, I think, rests on a false dilemma. It assumes that if the Father is the only true God, then Jesus cannot also be God. Instead, in the Trinitarian perspective, there's no such tension at all. This tension is created by the presupposition of Unitarianism. Now, the Father is God, the Son is God, and the Holy Spirit is God, one God in three persons. The language of John 17, 3 does not deny the deity of Christ. It merely affirms the Father as the source within the Trinity, a role that is consistent with the Father-Son relationship throughout Scripture. Remember, the Trinity is one being who exists as three persons. Trinitarians make a distinction between the being of God and the personhood of God. And of course, this Muslim has no idea about those categories. Now, the argument from John 17, 3 fails because it assumes, as I said before, Unitarianism and does not account for the full biblical revelation of the Trinity. Jesus' statement is entirely consistent with his own divinity, as evidenced by the broader context of John's gospel and the consistent testimony of the entirety of Scripture. The Muslim argument here imposes an external, unbiblical framework onto the text, while a proper understanding of the Trinity resolves the supposed tension. There is no tension. Jesus, being fully God, can affirm the Father as the only true God without negating his own, de his own deity. And in fact, the text, when understood properly, fits seamlessly into a Trinitarian framework, leaving the Muslim critique theologically and exegetically baseless. And so uh, while it's fun and kind of gets clicks to say you can refute Christianity in 60 seconds, um, it obviously evinces this gentleman's uh, ignorance of what Christians believe. And of course, this happens often. The Muslim will presuppose their conception of God and then impose that presupposed conception of God onto the Christian position. And obviously that is um, fallacious. All right. So there you go. Um, I didn't do it in 60 seconds, but a, a, a broader explanation is required here because we're doing a little bit of theology. But hopefully you see why um, this Muslim argument is tired, old and biblically unwarranted. It's unbiblical. And it just simply assumes a Muslim conception of God tries to impose it upon the Christian conception of God, imposing it upon the text of Scripture. Hopefully you guys can see the shallow nature of this form of argumentation. All right. Till next time. Take care. God bless.